Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture of the course Digital Electronics and Circuits and in this lecture we will talk about an important concept called as metastability. Correct? Right. To begin with, what is metastability or what is metastable state? So basically metastable state is a state where a circuit is not able to settle at a stable or zero or one logic level within the time required for a proper operation of the circuit. Right. So basically this means like circuit is not able to settle at a stable zero or one logic correct and when can this happen right so if you recall we spoke about a concept of setup time and hold time this particular metastable state or this metastability happens whenever there is a setup and hold time violation so if you re remember right what we spoke initially was let's assume this is a clock edge and this is my input D When we spoke about setup and hold time, we basically said this is T setup. Basically, this is the amount of time before the passage of the clock uh, for which the input D should be stable for it to be captured properly. And T hold is nothing but the time after the passage of the clock or after the clock event for which we should hold a value of D at the input for it to be captured properly, right? Now, what happens? in case uh, there is a violation and setup and hold time violation happens this would result in a problem in the circuit such that uh, what could happen is if at all uh, let's assume we have a d flip flop and the input changes in this time frame right let's assume this is an input db which is connected to d and this is q this is clock right what happens if input db toggles like this which is uh, it's like having a setup time violation in this case what could happen is the output qa right qa could latch onto a value 0 or 1 which be which is undeterministic right it might, might not be able to capture a value 0 or it might not be able to capture a value 1 and it could capture any one of these values and we don't know which value it would be able to capture and it, it might not be able to settle to a stable 1 or 0 value so this particular problem is called as a metastability problem right uh, what let's see a consequence of this problem right let's assume that we have a combinational circuit over here this is a clock this is like a combinational logic and uh, the combination logic feeds into a d flip flop with a clock a and then what happens over here is we have a flip flop and which is present in a domain which is running on a different clock frequency let's assume clock b again the this is output and let's call this as d input di let's call it d uh, output or D stage one, right? Uh, D S one. Correct. What would happen in this particular case? Let's assume our clock A was toggling something like this. This is clock A. And clock B is a faster running clock and it's on a different frequency domain altogether and let's assume clock b was behaving something like this right now let's assume this particular di di input Let's assume this is a setup time window. Whole time window, right? 
now let's assume our d in somehow toggles in this particular window it goes from 0 to 1 in this window what happens in this particular case right the output ds1 right it would be an unknown value for this time frame right and this is a matter stable state i hope this is clear and what are the disadvantages of particular meta stable state the disadvantages of meta stable state or consequences of meta stable state are first of all it will lead to unpredictable behavior of the system you can't predict what would happen it will be 0 1 or what is the value and other thing is right let's assume this ds1 is captured by multiple other blocks like this goes to let's assume block 1 this goes to block 2 this particular depending upon the cone of logic in b1 and b2 this value could be interpreted differently right so basically it means that different fan out cones can read different values and it can drive a design to unknown state basically leading to a system hang or deadlock all right what is the another uh, disadvantage right if an unstable zero or one propagates in the system to a different portion of design right it could lead to high current and result in chip burnout so this is an example of a meta stable state and these are the advantages behavior the, the behavior being unpredictable different fan out cones reading a value differently leading to system going into unknown state and eventually resulting in high current and chip burnout correct so how do we avoid this meta stable state right let's assume uh, let's assume our previous example only where we said we had a combo logic over here combo logic this is t this is q this is nothing but clock frequency a and uh, let's assume that this is going to an another d flip flop which is like di the output is ds1 this is on one different clock clock p what we will do is to avoid metastability right let's add one d flip flop here right this is q let's call it d out right and let's run it on the same frequency as clock p so what we have done is we have added a new portion of the design this is what we have added newly okay one extra flop and what would happen in this particular case right if our clock A was behaving like this and if our clock B was something like so on let's assume right d in was we said like d in is ramping up in this duration my ds1 was unknown state over here what would happen to d out tell me one thing once d out is there right what would happen is at the next positive edge of the clock at this edge of a clock what would happen at this positive edge of the clock by the time this particular matter stability comes into picture it has gone and that particular value one which was obtained at this particular level will be transferred out at this point of time so d out would be behaving like this so this particular matter stability is avoided right so basically matter stability is avoided basically what we got one clock delay 
because we added one extra flip flop. So this is the entire concept of a meta stability and avoiding meta stability. Now this particular circuit, right, two D flip flops uh, connected back to back is called as a synchronizer block. And sometimes what happens is two flop synchronizer is not sufficient to remove meta stability. And in that case, usually three flop synchronizers are used. And depending upon like that, all these things depends upon setup and hold times, right? Hold time and setup times would determine like how many number of how many number of D flip flops should be used back to back, and basically how long the synchronizer circuit should be there, whether it should be two flop long, three flop long, or four flop long, and uh, there is like all set of analysis which are done on this depending upon the uh, tech node and everything, right? And uh, usually what is happened is like mean time between failures MTBF is analyzed to determine how many flop synchronizer should be used. However, that is outside uh, the scope of this particular course. We just need to remember that meta stability is a big problem if at all it occurs and it could be avoided using synchronizer. We looked at a two stage synchronizer. Similarly, there could be three stage of synchronizer and that depends upon number of synchronization uh, synchronizers depend upon like uh, what is the setup and hold time uh, uh, times for that particular uh, circuit, which eventually depends upon the technology node and depend and there's like an analysis which is known as mean time between failures MTBF. Uh, and using which we could determine like how many flip flops should be used in a synchronizer. I hope this lecture was useful. Thanks for attending.